This video is looking at the basic ideas of bearings and the theory behind bearings. The theory behind it isn't too hard, it's just when we apply it in practice that's where it gets tricky. And part of the reason people find it so hard is because we've got to refer back to all our angle rules, so alternate angles, co-interior angles, angles in a circle, angles on a straight line. And we'll often have to try and work out angles using those rules, which we'll see later on. So the theory isn't too difficult. The first thing we need to know is that there are two types of bearings. One type are compass bearings. That's based on the compass points on a compass. And true bearings. So compass bearings would be where you're measuring from north or south, you do which are the ones closer. So if I was measuring a bearing that was down here, okay, that line there is closer to south, so I'll be measuring from south, and I'm heading it towards the easterly direction. So I measure north or south, I then put an angle, and I say, followed by east or west. An example might be if I've got a bearing down here, so that's 150 degrees, okay. I want to write that as a compass bearing. I go right, it's actually closer to south and I'm measuring it towards east and the angle I'm going from south to east is 30 degrees. It's 30 degrees because 180 minus 150 is 30. So on a compass bearing that would be south 30 degrees east. I'm going from south I'm measuring 30 degrees towards east. The other type of angles we've got, or bearings we've got, are true bearings. And they are always measured from north. And they're measured in a clockwise direction. So that's if this is north here. We're always measuring it clockwise, which is going that way. And we always write three digits, so they're sometimes called three-figure bearings. We also need to know um, just our basic compass directions, which hopefully you know. So it goes north, east, south, west. Either never eat shredded wheat or naughty elephant squirt water. So remember the order it goes. There's 90 degrees in between each of those. Um, Northeast is halfway between north and east, so that's 45 degrees. Southwest is halfway between south and west, so the true bearing of southwest is 180 plus 45, so 225 degrees. We also then can extend that further. If we've, so we've got north, east, southwest. We've also got north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west northwest north we can even split in between there okay and that's north northeast because it's halfway between north and northeast this is halfway between south and southeast so it's south southeast halfway between west and southwest is west southwest so be aware of those and be able to work out what these angles are you don't need to learn them as long as you kind of go every um, Sixteenth of it is twenty of the circle is two twenty two and a half degrees, or every eighth is forty five degrees. Okay, a couple of little hints that are going to help you when it comes to working with bearings. The first one is always, always, always draw in the north line, and you draw that north line in where you are measuring from. Many people misread where we're measuring from. If I was doing a bearing of 180 degrees from A, that means I'm starting at A, so we draw the north line in at A, and I measure 180, 120 degrees, because that was the bearing, from A. 
Some people also find it helpful if you draw the whole four points of the compass. So some people do the four points of the compass to help them, and that's fine as well. So we'll look at example 18, the questions there, to be able to practice drawing the bearings and converting either from a compass bearing to a true bearing or vice versa. So the first one we want to do is draw a bearing of 150 degrees. To choose your starting point, always draw in your north line. We measure clockwise, so we're going this direction, 150 degrees. It's not going to be all the way around. It's going to be past a right angle, and that's our bearing, 150 degrees. We then want to convert that to a compass bearing, so it might help us now to have drawn in the north, east, south, west. And we go, right, where was our line closest to? It's closest to south, and it's going towards east. The angle we're doing is 180, take away 50, so 30 degrees. So the compass bearing is south, 30 degrees east. The next one. Notice here, it's 0, 27 degrees. So if we draw in north, East, south, west, 0, 27, measuring 27 degrees from north in the clockwise direction is going to be up here somewhere. And then the compass bearing, the line is closest to north and it's going in an easterly direction, so we write it as north, 27 degrees east. Going a different one now south 25 degrees east so that means we are starting closer to south we're going in the easterly direction and we're going 25 degrees so down here they don't need to be exact we want to convert that now to a true bearing so to do that we want to go how many degrees is that from north in a clockwise direction because north-south makes a straight line, this is 180 minus 25, which is 155 degrees. So our true bearing is 155 degrees true. And our last example for this one is north 20 degrees west. So drawing northeast, southwest, north to west, north 20 degrees up there. To find our true bearing, remember we've got to go round clockwise, so all this. And that angle there, because it's not quite a full circle, it's 360 degrees, take away 20 degrees, which is 340 degrees. So our true bearing is 340 degrees true. The next little tricky thing is finding the bearing where you're going in the opposite direction. For example, if you know the bearing of A from B is 20 degrees, what is the bearing of B from A? Okay. A from B means that you start at B and go to A. B from A means you start at A and you measure the angle to get to B. These are called back bearings, but you don't need to necessarily know that it's a back bearing. You can either use angle rules to calculate the back bearings, to so draw it out, use alternate angles, angles that add up to 360. Or there's a quick little sneaky way, if you can remember it. You add 180 degrees to the original bearing. Sometimes you get an answer bigger than 360 degrees, so what you have to do there is subtract 360 degrees. Sounds complicated, but we'll have a look at a couple of examples. And we'll do these using both methods, and you use whichever method works best for you. So the first thing we'll do is draw it out. We're calculating the bearing of B from A if the bearing of A from B is 50 degrees. So that means we start with B, We'll draw our north line in from B. We're measuring an angle of 50 degrees. So that's our 
bearing that we start with, okay, which is our bearing of A from B. Now, to get our back bearing, or to go backwards, to get the bearing of B from A, we go north from here, and we're trying to work out that angle there. Several different ways you can do it. First one, we can draw in our line down to south. We know that this angle here is 180 degrees. And this is where we start to use our angle rules. So here we've got a Z, or alternate angles, and we know that they're the same. So we can say that this angle here is also 50 degrees. So our bearing of B from A is 180 plus 50, which is 230 degrees true. Using the quick rule I said, and you can see why this works, you just add 180 onto 50 degrees. 180 plus 50 gives you 230 degrees true. Now you may have actually seen a different way of working out the bearing, and some of you might want to use this one. You might go, well actually, you know what, I could just do 360 degrees, take away this angle here. We know this angle because it's co-interior to 50 degrees, so co-interior angles add up to 180. So this angle here is going to be 180 take away 50, which is 130 degrees. And then we're going 360 degrees minus 130, which also gives us 230 degrees. So there are different ways of doing it. Next example, we've got a bearing of 207 degrees, so that's between 180 and 270. Going from B to A, this is 207 degrees. We want to work out our bearing going backwards, which is from A to B. We were trying to work out this angle here. Again, several different ways you can do it. You could go, this is angle here is 360 take away 207, which is 100, uh, sorry, yeah, 153 degrees. And use co-interior angles. Co-interior angles here add up to 180. So our red angle will be 180 minus 153 degrees, which is 27 degrees. And so our bearing has to be three digits, so 0, 27 degrees. True? You may not like that way. You may go, actually, I want to use my alternate angles again. And that way may be quicker. Here we can go. This angle is 180, this angle here is 207 minus 180, which is 27 degrees. And then we have alternate angles, which are the same. So our red angle again has to be 27 degrees, so that works too. And the final check is using what we said, you can do 180 degrees plus your original bearing, which was 207. But that gives us 387, which is bigger than 360. So you do 387, take away 360, which gives us 27 degrees again, or 0, 27 degrees true. All of them are perfectly valid ways, and you can use whichever one you want. Last couple, and we won't do all of them. We'll just do one or two ways of doing these. Drawing 125 degrees, so that's over a right angle, less than 180. So 125 degrees. That's starting from B, going to A. We want to get from A to B. 
So you can see different ways of doing this. My preferred way might be in this case, this is co-interior. So those two are co-interior. Co-interior angles add up to 180. So my blue angle is 180 minus 125, which is 55 degrees. Okay. It's not the blue angle I want. I'm wanting the red angle, because remember I'm measuring clockwise from north. So that's going to be 360 degrees, take away 55. So 360 minus 55, which gives us 305 degrees. True. And I always just check, does it look right? And that does look right, because it's between 270 and 360. Let's try using the quick method. So 125 plus 180 gives us 305 degrees true. And we don't need to do anything with that because it's less than 360. Okay, last one, 320 degrees. Drawing north, 320 degrees, it's past a right angle. 320 degrees is measuring this angle round here, so it's 320. Again, we're trying to now work out from A to B, which is this angle here. And I've kind of preempted myself there in working out this angle. Because if I work out this angle, I can use co interior angles, which add up to 180. So the blue angle, no, sorry, the black angle. Is 360 minus 320, which is 40 degrees. So that's 40. And then the blue angle, which is the bearing we're interested in, is 180, because they cut take away 40, which is 140 degrees. You could have done it using alternate again. Okay, that's 180. This will be 320, take 180 which is 140 and then alternate angles 140 degrees or we try doing a quick shortcut method 320 plus 180 gives us 500 degrees that's too much because it's going around the circle so we do 500 take 360 equals 140 degrees true. Any of those ways work.